These two pathways have a name in the Norse tradition. The path of service is called troth, and the path of witchcraft is called seder. Troth, translated from Old Norse, means loyalty, and is related, of course, to the path of service. Loyalty to the gods, loyalty to tradition, and most importantly, loyalty to truth. The path of service is originally said to be the path of priestship, because a priest possessed not just a priestly function, but also a function of a low speaker and a ruler, meaning that such a person took on the responsibility of directing this process. The process of human coexistence. The priest would, of course, invest his life in order to solidify the algorithms of truth, in order to judge people so that they would behave and think correctly, creating the right future this way. Thus, the path of service subsequently received the name of the light path, meaning that it is directly connected to working with people, working with a community, teaching people to act correctly, teaching them how to think in the way to be able to tell the truth from lies and to live according to one's truth. Of course, this was all necessary so that people would fill up common proto-foundation tradition and the common proto-foundation of world creation only with the true algorithms, with proper information about what actually took place without making things up and not including fragmentary or deceitful information. As long as paganism was alive, this was generally how things run. But somewhere something went wrong. Subsequently, we will find out what went wrong and will, of course, fix it. We will do so first in our consciousness and then in the consciousness of the world. But first we have to find it. The mechanism of working on the path of troth, and it was always said to be the masculine path, not feminine, was such an instrument as Galdr. Galdr is a general term for the mechanism of governance, whether through runes, incantation, through knowing the mythos, or through the ability to direct informational currents in people's consciousness by explaining to them what is true and what is false. This includes the knowledge of the laws and the monitoring of the latter so they would support the truth and not lies. Truth is basically the right to dictate your will to the world. This is a ruler's function, who has the ultimate say when he says it will be this way. It is implied that the mind on the path of truth will possess a great amount of knowledge. In ancient times, a Gothi was exactly someone who practiced Galdr and was the priest supporting Troth. A Gothi was obliged to know the bloodlines of all families, who came from whom, who is related to who. They had to know all laws. Subsequently, it wasn't the Scandinavian Gothi, but rather Celtic Brihons, who also fulfilled the function of law speakers or a judge, which is closer to the modern definition of a judge as we know it nowadays, as someone who has the right to define what is true and what is false, who is right and who is wrong. Brihon had to know all matters by heart that were happening in every part of the government or in a conglomerate of tribes. They knew what, when, what decision was made and why. There was even such a rule that a Brihon who became a judge had to put in a deposit for himself. A monetary deposit had to be made. If he made a correct ruling, he was paid a bonus. If he made an incorrect ruling, the deposit would go towards compensating the damage made to the victims of the wrongful decision. 
Yes, we should have laws like this in our days. So many lies would perhaps vanish if judges were responsible for their actions. Если бы судьи несли солидарную ответственность за свое, за свои действия. Nevertheless, in the earlier times, this is exactly how things were arranged. It is clear that there were fewer laws and fewer people, but there was a rule that stated that should you call yourself a priest, you have to maintain a certain image. You would have to walk the path of service and be truthful. Apart from having a large knowledge base, someone on the path of troth should expect that he would receive knowledge not just any random way, but exactly according to the way it is written in the foundational transfer vectors. Yera, Yera Naud and Yera Dagas Naud. These are the functions that were put into these vectors and formulas. They are the mechanisms of acquiring information. Only according to truth, only with the specific component of the elemental power that is there. Only with the appropriate amount of fire. In essence, Dagas implies that you are being supported by the mountain gods and that just any person cannot become a carrier of Troth's potential. This would happen in accordance with the highest authority, with the forces of Muspelheimer. And a certain seal must be placed on a person to make it clear that he is a servant on the path of Troth, that he is a Gothi by right and not an imposter. And of course, the skill of being able to tell the truth from lies was the exam that those who desired to and those who already stepped on the path of service had to take before gods every time they were presented with a problem to determine what is true and what isn't. A Gothi fulfilled this function for the gods, but before anything else, for his own tribe, in order to guide his people, guide his community, according to a defined path of civilization development, according to the gods' plan. And naturally, and this is why this path was considered to be a masculine path, this requires the presence of a substantial physical power because the burden on the consciousness is immense. It requires a very good memory, because they have to memorize all these things. One needs to be able to direct energy along this path, which is important for us to know, because we will be uploading it certainly into ourselves. For this, the right-sided direction of consciousness is very important, meaning your inner yera has to rotate clockwise on this path. We will remember this rule as we will be actively applying it. This is a path of the right, as they would call it in Ross, meaning according to the sun. Seidr is a mechanism opposite to Troth. The path into the world of Seidr lies through the rune Ingus and through the vectors that run from Midgard to Vanaheimer. Yera, Urus Ingus, and Yera, Perth Ingus, respectively. Seidr implies different rules of life. We can say that if on the path of Troth one controls the reality, then on the path of Seidr one adapts to the reality. Here reality is studied and you learn to catch the currents of natural forces as well as to include yourself in these currents without altering them in the process. Adjusting to reality, merging with the universal currents and feeling the unified spirit of the world, this is, of course, the Vanier magic. The magic of Troth, although it is being called the magic of the Aesir, but no, it is actually the magic of the Jotunar. And here we have the Vanier magic, which is diametrically opposite. Vanier, as you know, do not burden themselves with long memory. And the vectors Yera Urus Ingus and Yera Pert Ingus also showed us that for the realization here it's not necessary to have long memory. Remembering the truths and the lies and being able to tell one from the other, all of that is not necessary. If we looked at these vectors by themselves, without looking at the rest of the picture, we would immediately notice that the Vanier vectors actually deny what the opposite Jotunar vectors insist on. 
If there they speak the truth, then here they say what truth, the most important thing, is for the world to hold in its place. It doesn't matter if it's by means of truth or not, if something actually happened or someone just saw it in a dream. It doesn't matter at all. Thus, the path of priestship, the path of magic, exists exactly for the purpose of combining these two forces. Not to reconcile them, no. They are always in a state of quarrel and it's normal. But to combine them within one's own consciousness, in a way to keep the truth and not disturb the equilibrium of the world. Because if there is only the truth alone, regardless of the world, regardless of nature, we would destroy the entire world to the ground and after that the waters rise above the mountains and on we go. Or with only the algorithms of Vana Heimr, with algorithms of Seidr alone, it would be a vegetative existence. No development, no civilization, merely life according to the rhythms of nature, meaning that we would now live not even in the medieval times but as forest tribes. As our ancestors lived some thousand years ago, we would be the same. And so we have these two opposite paths which must combine within a mage's consciousness so that he can use them both without damaging or belittling either one of these forces. To exercise all that is prescribed both on the path of Troth and Seidr while achieving results without any damage, not causing a single ounce of damage for the carriers of either potential. And I mean the forces. And such a consciousness, such combination, is only possible within a magical consciousness. If the first path, troth without seidr, is straight up inquisition, spot on, then the path of seidr by itself is the path of ignorance, extreme ignorance. And only by combining the two forces, one can obtain something. They have fought each other for a long time. Aesir, who descended from the Jotunar, and Vanir, spirits of nature, fought exactly to assert their path. As the world has to develop somehow, Vanir say according to nature, Aesir say according to our memory, according to the Jotunar law. And as you know already, no one won. There were two attempts to reconcile. The first attempt ended badly. It was the creation of the god Kvasir. We know how unfortunate the fate of our poor Kvasir ended. Having arrived into the proto-foundation evil, into the realm of the proto-foundation evil Svartalheim, which he couldn't deal with because he made mistakes that are unacceptable in that world. One should understand where they are. He didn't understand. In Svartalheim, they would dissect their own mother and melt her in a crucible for the sake of interest, let alone Kvasir. The second attempt was more successful. It was the process of mutual learning. This attempt was actualized by Odin and Freya. Odin, according to the tale, learned Seidr from Freya. She taught him witchcraft, she taught him the laws of nature, she taught him to understand nature. Odin, in turn, taught her troth. He taught her Galdr, he taught her runes, he taught her the songs, the knowledge, and he taught her how to preserve long memory which she, as a Vanir goddess, did not have. This is exactly what allowed them to become two completely independent forces who, through this mutual learning, obtained greater strength and gained independence from each other. And so this phrase that Odin learned from Freya and Freya learned from Odin subsequently allowed those who read this myth to make a mistake of marrying these two gods together. Typical human nature. When they watch their favorite movie and there are two characters who play a couple in the movie, there is always a desire to marry them in real life, while well, nothing of the sort even took place in reality. In real life, they actually hate each other, those two actors. But in the mind of a commoner, they make a harmonious couple because of the desire to see in real life what is on the screen. 
thus refusing the lie, understanding that a double life is a lie of some sort. So a commoner who read stories about Odin and Freya thought more or less in a similar way. We do not think like this. We know how to read the sagas. And we've already covered channels of gods. We know perfectly that Frigg and Freya are not one and the same, and that Odin and Freya are not a couple, not a husband and a wife, not lovers, nothing. They are forces who were able to find an ability within themselves to absorb what either of them didn't have before, without paying attention to criticism, jokes, confusion from their family and disdain from their enemies. This is what true magic is all about. Because magic isn't afraid of anything and isn't ashamed of anything. This way, the fusion of these two possibilities opens the path of science, which is closed for humans. We will try to open it through this connection. Will a rune appear to unlock this path for us? Or maybe there will be something else that appears there. But first we have to try connecting the two, so that we don't become that dumb inquisitor or that equally dumb warlock. When we connect them within ourselves, we will see what comes of it. But we want to connect these two paths within ourselves, because the world we live in now isn't as homogeneous as it once was, and various elements are present. And if before Thor used to go and fight Volva and Seid Konur, who actually practiced the path of Seidr, and he was solemnly convinced that this path must not be implemented for the development of civilization, then Odin, Loki, and other Aesir, including their children, adopted a different point of view. They said everything is possible, but one must do something with their consciousness so that it doesn't exclude that which is unclear or unneeded, but study it and possibly find something else, regardless of what path of transition and movement your forces and your God insist on. You must be able to do everything, because it may be so that gods only lost just because they didn't know how to do something differently. This means that we have to fix this mistake and be well versed in everything. Therefore, we will be learning everything and what we eventually choose will not depend on the traditional preference. It won't be based on the path of faith or the path of hate, the path of absolute acceptance or absolute rejection, but rather by very different motives. By the path of knowledge, path of loyalty, path of understanding and agreement, these are different paths. We will need to unlock them in our own consciousness.